Hi, my name is Morgane. My Hebrew name is Mo. And I am a Jew. Now, when I say I am a Jew, you can break it down to many aspects. The most important one before religion, before belief system, before even culture, is the ethnic one, the one you didn't you don't get a say in. You don't choose to be born white or black. You don't choose to be born male or female. We, the Jewish people, we have the Jewish culture, we have the Jewish faith. But faith can be changed. You can denounce your religion and change to another. You can be secular. Culture, you can choose if you resonate or not. But the blood of your ancestors, the DNA of the reincarnations that you've had in this life, that is something that you come here with. We are Jewish, ethnically. And you wonder, well, how is that possible? It's a religion. Well, that applies to Christianity, to Islam. Those aren't ethnicities, those are belief systems. But the Jewish people, the Israelites, have been here for 4,000 years. We are a very ancient people to still walk the planet. Of course, there are far in the past distant civilizations and peoples, but people who are still here and still live by their culture and are still together and bottom line still exist. We are exceptionally ancient and that goes back a long time, hence it's in our blood. So, <clears throat> Even if, and it's not, but even if somehow the belief system or the culture was allegedly bad and one might be like, I don't want that, we still can't escape that. So we cannot escape the Jewish persecution the persecution of the world against our people. If one Jew was to go to Hitler during the Holocaust and tell him, I don't believe in Judaism, I denounce, that would not matter. Every single Jewish man, woman, and child that was caught was eradicated. So with that possibility that the belief system, maybe there's something wrong with it, or the culture, maybe Israel, there's something wrong with it, still you need to understand, even if that was true, and it's not, but I'm taking the worst case scenario, even if that was true, still we cannot escape our persecution, even in that narrative. Then and now. See, the Nazism, even though the West thinks that it died with Hitler, it didn't. It is a profoundly heinous, diabolic ideology that has been around before Hitler and has stayed after. It is now being played out by the Palestinians. Not now, but for the past decades. We'll get to it. Now I want to get to the Jewish faith and culture. If you have it in your mind or heart that there's something wrong with it, you have fallen to anti-Semitic propaganda. 
The Jewish faith is actually the grandmother of both Christianity and Islam. It is the mother of oneness consciousness of the one God that is all-encompassing of all the fragmented gods. It is the deliverers of the Ten Commandments, of the base of the base of the moral backbone of our society. That is the Jewish faith. My Muslim friends, you follow our prophets. My Christian friends, you follow our prophets. You rebranded our belief system and gave it a different name. That's fine. We root for you to express your belief in God and the way that makes sense with your life path. See, never in the history you will find an example of the Jewish people trying to force convert a people to their faith. That's why there's so little of us and so many of others. Billions of Muslims, billions of Christians, 15 million Jews, minus 1,000 at least since the recent massacre in Israel. Give me a moment. I will not edit this. Throughout history, before the rebirth of ancient Israel as the modern state of Israel, we have always been given three options from the nations that we have wandered through and tried to make a home in. The three options were thus. Either convert to Islam or Christianity, depending on the country we were, we were in. Or get killed. Or leave and have all your property confiscated. Generation after generation after generation. This is why we kept being exiled from countries. Not because we did anything wrong there. Because everywhere we refused to let go of our essence that God has given us, of our birth essence. We just wanted to exist and contribute. But divine jealousy, who are you to be the chosen people? We are the chosen people. Had people try to get rid of the evidence and claim the Jewish wisdom. This has to be said. Not every person, of course. I'm talking about the darkest aspect of people throughout history. Those who lived by rot of spirit. And so it's like instead of honoring your teacher and loving your teacher, you try to kill them and take credit for the work that they taught you. Obviously not everyone did that, but those who did do that, the damage was insurmountable throughout the generations to my people. And then came the Holocaust. Where in less than six years, six plus million human beings, men, women, children, Jewish people were massacred in a death machine. And it took the West six years to wake up when it was nearly too late, when it started worrying that Hitler is just about to get to them. And so America stepped in and was the hero of the Jewish people, and it saved our people. Thank you, America. And now we have a country. How is it that we have a country? Let's go into the details. In 1948, after the Holocaust ended, the United Nations was formed to make sure that what happened to the Jewish people will never happen again. And they voted. 
to have the ancient land of Israel, the indigenous land of the Jewish people, of the Israelites, of the Hebrews, all the same people, it's just different names to describe the same people. After them being exiled in the seventh century by the newborn Islam, and my Muslim friends, this is not about you. This is about history. It's just, it's just how things happened. Take it or leave it. Deal with it or don't deal with it. Truth is what it is. And just to be clear, since that 7th century time when we were exiled from the land of Israel, we were never fully out of there. For the past 4,000 years, there has always been Jewish people in Israel. Always a representation. We were born there in Judea, Jewish, which is in the land of Israel. Same one that is now the state of Israel. So this is a miraculous story after a diabolic tragedy, but from that was born a miraculous result of the indigenous people Re re retrieving, receiving their homeland back. It's unheard of in history. The story of Israel is the opposite of colonialism, which is blood libel. We'll get to that. It is a decolonialization because prior to 1948, it was ruled by the British, who are the, the mother of colonialists throughout history. They colonialized everybody. They had my own grandfather in a prison in Africa, in a British prison in Africa. Which is why I find it very ironic every time a British person talks about the Israeli colonializer. Shut the fuck up. Oh yeah, I'm going to be graphic in this video. I am done with political correctness, with politeness, as my people are butchered in the streets. So expect some drama. So before 1948, for 20 years, the British colonialized what was then called Palestina. We'll talk about that. And before that, the Ottoman Empire. And before that, many different colonializers and, and, and emperors, random ones who just want to take over something. But since the second century, when a Roman emperor named Israel Palestina has nothing to do with Islam. It was 500 years before Islam was born. Definitely has nothing to do with the Palestinian people of today who have not been there at all. They are not indigenous to the land of Israel. They're not even indigenous to the region Palestina since those centuries. We'll get to that too. Hopefully if I'll remember. So throughout the generations, ever since being taken from the Israelites by that Roman emperor in the second century, it's just different colonializers, never the modern day Palestinian people. It was never theirs to begin with. So it was never theirs to be taken from. And in 1948, even though there were many Jews in Europe that survived the Holocaust, there were also many Jews in what was then Palestina, but Israel. It was called Palestina Eretz Israel, by the way, just to be clear. It wasn't just called Palestina. Palestina Eretz Israel. Eretz Israel is Hebrew for the land of Israel. You'll see in all documentations written Palestina Aleph Yud, which is initials Aleph Yud for Eretz Israel, for land of Israel. So there were already Jews there, and there were also Arabs there. And those Arabs were Arabs from different neighboring Arab countries to Israel who traveled through what was then Palestina. And some of those merchants decided to stay, because Israel is right in the middle of many Arab countries. It was a transition point. And some decided to settle there. Only in the recent centuries. And so anyone who was living there, Arab, Jew, Buddhist, dog, cat, donkey, 
bird was a Palestinian. Not because it's a land that is named after a people that were there, aka the alleged Palestinians. No, no, no. But because it was the name of a region that the Roman emperor gave in the second century. Why did he give it that name? I will get to what's going on in Israel. Trust me, I have to give you this premise because I need to break down your misconceptions and your iner inherent anti-Semitism that is based on anti-Semitic propaganda that you don't even know you carry. And you're a good person, I know you are, but you've been lied to. You, they've taken your good heart, the one that cares about people, they distorted history, they told you lies, and now you don't know, so you act in an anti-Semitic manner that hurts us and costs us our lives. So you need to know, so you sit down and you listen. If it's hard for you, be damn sure it was harder for families to be burned alive. to watch their children executed in front of them and then be taken hostage to Gaza. Don't you tell me it's too hard for me, deal. Sit down. So when that emperor in the second century took over Israel, he called it Syria Palestina. What does the word Palestina mean? Ironically, it actually comes from a Hebrew word, polish, that means invader. The Romans were like, we managed, we succeeded after so many peoples tried to take over the land of Israel and the Israelites, and they kept fighting them off. But we've succeeded, so let's celebrate our invasion by referring, by calling Israel the invasion in a Hebrew word. So ironically enough, the Palestinians of today named themselves the invaders. can't make this shit up. And you know when they started calling themselves Palestinians in reference to something that is separate than the, the Israeli people? 20 years after the state of Israel was reborn. In the 1960s, in a movement started by Yasser Arafat, the father of the Palestinians who wasn't even born in the region. <laughs> So the Arab people that traveled through as merchants from different neighboring Arab countries through Israel in the past several centuries, they were offered, just like the Jewish people in 1948, the land of Israel to be divided in half, half for the Jews, half for these Arabs. The reason I'm saying Arabs and not Palestinians is because back then they still didn't call themselves Palestinians, so it matters. The Jews accepted and celebrated the Arabs of the region said, no, we do not want to share. We don't want half. And you might say, well, why would they accept half if they had it all? As I said, just see how brainwashed you are. You just listen to everything I said and you, you forgot. It wasn't theirs. It's not like it was theirs and then they're like, okay, have half. It wasn't theirs. They were living other under the British and before that under the Ottoman Empire, etc. And now they're getting a gift to own a land, half of that land that wasn't theirs ever, not historically, not belief-wise. You don't have the word Jerusalem even mentioned in the Quran. And once again, this is not a competition between religions. It's not about that. This is about giving context and information so you'll understand the level of insanity. that the word Jerusalem is not even mentioned in your Bible, and yet you claim this city is holy to you. What? Jerusalem has been the capital of the Israelites, of the Jewish people, of Israel, before there was Islam, before there was Christianity, before there was a Roman Empire. What? So they were offered half of something they never had, and they said no. And not only did they say no, they went out to war to finish up what Hitler started. See, those people were in support of the Nazis at the time. You have footage, you have documentations of that, you have newspapers from then. Everything I say you can verify. If you want.
but maybe you don't, so. So they went out to war in 1948 alongside seven other Arab nations against a handful of Israeli farmers, the ones that were there already, and Holocaust survivors that came from Europe. And yet we won. Do you understand the level of miracle that needs to occur to have seven Arab countries fight these handful of Jews and for the Jews to win? And since then, every few years, the since the 1960s, they started calling themselves the Palestinians in ways of separating themselves from Israel and from the Israelis. We do not accept the existence of a Jewish state. We do not accept the indigenous people of Israel, the Israelites actually living in their homeland officially. No, we are Palestinians. We are the invaders. And a culture of bloodshed and terrorism and hate and radicalism and religious zealousy and Nazism ideology, they still teach in their schools, their children, that Hitler was a hero. For decades, Israel has dealt with that. In 2005, Israel uprooted settlers, Jewish settlers that were living in Gaza. Out of there is an offer of peace. Here, Gaza, here, Palestinians, create a little heaven of a Singapore. They're on a stripe. Their strip is on a beach, one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. They could have made themselves into a little heaven, a little Singapore. Prosper from tourism, from booming economy. Israel would have helped them. We tried. But in 2006, Hamas, a terror organization, an officially, internationally known terror organization, was elected. Some will say it was couped, it, but to be the leader of the Palestinian people. Now, Hamas has, the, has it in their charter. You can Google it, you can search for it. It's not something that is like, in the charter of Hamas, they write that they aim to eradicate the Jewish people. Now you hear, oh, it's the Zionists. 95% of Jews worldwide are Zionists. When you hear Zionists, you hear Jew. Oh, it's the Zionists. Oh, it's the Israeli. Oh, okay, so it's okay to eradicate a nation, a person, because they're part of a nation. That is, that's somehow okay. Of course not. But even so, it's still a lie. And the people, the Palestinian people, know that. They know that. Unlike... The Iranian people, for example, that you see now are fighting in the streets, the Ayatollah, the Islamic Republic, the regime that is oppressing them. The Iranian people are fighting them, resisting them, dying in the streets, being imprisoned by them in the name of freedom. Those are brave freedom fighters who want freedom and love and peace. They also are great supporters of Israel, by the way, the people, the Iranian people, in complete contrast to what their Iranian leadership is calling for, the annihilation of Israel, the Iranian people chant for us. That is a great example for a people that are very vastly different than their terror regime. But you could not and dare not compare them to the Palestinian people who know what Hamas is after, who have elected them, who even, okay, let's say you didn't elect them. Nearly 20 years, you couldn't uprise against them and change them if you're a people of love and freedom, of tolerance, and you just want peace and, and to live free and prosperous. If that was truly the case, you would have brought down Hamas by now. But no, they didn't. 
What they do is when Hamas kills a Jew, they cheer and hand out candies and chant, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Wow, that sounds so poetic. The river is the river of Jordan, borders the east of Israel. The sea is the Mediterranean Sea. It borders the west of Israel. Palestine will be free means free of Jews. What you saw now in the past four days since I'm recording this, the horrendous massacre. That's what will happen if Palestine will be free in the land of Israel. That's what they will do to us. What you saw right there, that's what, what it means from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Free Palestine. Have you seen the images? If you haven't seen the images, you're clueless. You're clueless to what's going on. You're clueless to evil. Go to X, former Twitter. Go online. Look at those images. Do not turn your head away. It's hard for you to watch. It's harder for us to go through. I'm going to get to what was happening in Israel. But you need this context so that you can understand and you're not and you won't come back with but what about this and how about that? Cuz you don't want the karma of doing something like that. Trust me. So in 2007 Hamas officially became the leader of the Palestinians in Gaza. And has enacted and attempted to enact many acts of terror. Now, please understand that before that time, before 2005, 2007, there was intifada, two intifadas actually. See, I grew up during the first intifada from night, uh, started in 1987 and ended in, in, the, in, in, in the 1990s. Intifada means a violent uprise against Jews. Again, what you just see in the massacre, that would be an example. See, Palestinian suicide bombers would go up on, would infiltrate Israel and go up on Israeli children's school buses and to blow up children. Why? Because when you kill a Jew, two things happen. First, you get to heaven if you die. And over there, 72 virgins await you. And every time you have sex with one of them, she goes back to being a virgin, like that for eternity. The second thing that happens when you kill a Jew is that you get paid by the Palestinian Authority a salary. If you somehow survive it, you get the salary. If you die, your family gets the salary, a monthly salary. For every Jew you kill, the more Jews you kill, the more money they receive. So I want you to think for a second about yourself. Think of the worst time in your life you ever had, where you were the poorest, the hungriest, the, in most pain. And someone comes in and tells you, hey, I'll give you a monthly salary of a lot of money to murder a Jew. Would you take that offer? No. And if you were to take that offer, what would that make of you? Exactly. So when a Palestinian does that, there's no excuse. Even if there was an occupation, there isn't. Even if there was oppression, there isn't. Even if Israel had done the worst things, it does not. It's blood libel, I will explain. Still, you wouldn't do such thing, right? Let me ask you another thing. If you were to get text messages and phone calls from a government telling you it's about to bomb the building that you're in because there is a terror infrastructure there in your neighbor's house, two floors below or whatever, for the sake of ideology or for the sake of principle, do you stay there? And let's say you have a child. Do you stay there with your child? Because let's be clear. Every building that is bombed by Israel and Gaza has A, terrorism in it, and B, the civilians are warned in advance, and they do have other places to go to. And even if they don't, it doesn't matter. They can flee the place. But the bottom line is, 
if they are there in that building when it blows down, they chose to be there knowing it's going to happen. So if their child tragically and horribly dies in that, and they're innocent in this because they're a child and children are always innocent. I'm talking about young children. 10 and above, you can brainwash them to become psycho murderers. And I know it's the most horrible thing to hear, but we've seen it. But if your child dies because you so chose to stay, even though you were warned, that's on you. And you know that. You know you would never stay in a place that you know is about to be bombed with your children. You would seek cover. You would put them in a safe place maybe. And then you would come back if you're on a suicide mission. So I want you to think about the parents who lost their children in a bombing. They're the bad guy. And their child is a victim of heinous parental negligence and a sacrifice in the name of their ideology. They sacrifice their children in the name of their ideology. Would you do that? No. So why would you excuse it? So I know I'm jumping from one thing to another. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be um, cohesive and, and, and clear. It's important for me, but I'm very... Um, I'm going through it, so so I appreciate your patience. I was saying about the intifadas before the election of Hamas, so Palestinians did that shit before Hamas. Hamas is a birth, a consequence of the Palestinian culture and ideology that is of terrorism and hate and insanity. It's Nazism. It's the Germans in the 1930s and the 1940s. Was every German evil? No, some of them tried to save Jews. And some of them were too scared to say anything, so they were quiet. So, of course, not every Palestinian. But the great majority either enacts terrorism or supports and celebrates terrorism or quietly is grateful for it. And there are very few, select few, who speak up against it and our allies to Israel. And I believe there are more that are quiet. But enabling the murder or the, the, the attempt to annihilate a people, the Jewish people, time and time again, enabling the murder of innocent elderly and children and men and women, when you know your cousin is doing that or that your neighbor is doing that and you're not reporting them and you're not saying anything and you're not stopping them, when you also know it will backfire at you, that's a crime. I don't care if you yourself don't enact the terror. Enabling evil is evil. You see the, the, you see the Iranian people dying in the name of not letting the Ayatollah commit atrocities. If they can do it, so many people have done it in history. We did it. But they somehow are exempt. There are people in this world, I know not most of you, most of you have a brain, but there are people in this world excusing their acts. Even if there was colonialism and apartheid and, and, and occupation and all these terrible things, everything I just described, if you were occupied, would you still do these things or would you fight in a different, more honorable manner? And let me be clear, Israel does not enact these things on them. Now I'm going to go into the detail. As for the occupation, alleged one, as I told you in 2005, we've completely left Gaza. They are their own autonomy, their own country. They have their own elections, their own leadership, their own government, their own authority. There isn't a single Israeli or Jewish presence in there except for the hostages that are taken against their will and held captive and are now said to be executed. That's not an occupation point. It's just not. Not kinda, not maybe, not close to, not not. So when you hear a Palestinian says the occupation, they're lying. When you see a news reporter here in America say the occupation, 
They're either lying maliciously or they're seriously stupid and ignorant and don't know how to do their job or pretty much anything. I don't know how to manage how they manage to brush their teeth. Seriously. Incompetence, negligence, blood libel, shameful enablement of the demonization of my people. That's about colonialism. Now let's talk about, okay, well, it's barricaded. Who barricades Gaza? And now you answer Israel. Uh-huh. And? What was that? No, nothing? Crickets? Egypt. Not only that, see, in the east of Gaza, there's Israel. On the west of Gaza, there's Egypt. There's barricade to Gaza from Israel and from Egypt. Israel allows thousands of Palestinians every day to go into Israel, a different territory. It's, it's, as, if, it's as if America would allow, fifth, I don't know, thousands of, of Canadians or, or, you know, legally uh, um, Mexicans to come into its borders every day to work and to go back home. Like, what? We're not, we don't have to do that, yet we do. Egypt does not. It's completely closed. Won't allow Palestinians in for any reason. A, if you have an issue with the barricade that Israel puts on Gaza, but you never say Egypt, or you didn't even know that Egypt does that too, and worse, you have a problem with Jews. That's called double standards. Oh, it's fine, because that's Muslim on Muslim, and that's Jewish on Muslim. It's the Jews. If the Egyptians are doing that, they must have a reason. But if the Israelis are doing that, well, the Jews are evil. So whoever taught you that there is a barricade on Gaza by Israel and didn't just kind of fail to mention also from Egypt, anti-Semitic propaganda. So why, okay, if there's no occupation and we withdrew from Gaza and we don't want to be there and they have their own autonomy, why is both Israel and Egypt barricading them? Because of what you just said in the, seen in the past four days, which they have been attempting and somewhat doing a little bit here and there for the past decades, but you haven't seen it in the news because it wasn't at this insane amount and capacity that the world can't avoid reporting it. They just, the images are so sensational and insane. There's no way of, there's no way of sanitizing it. There's no way of brushing it under the rug. There's no way of hiding it. So now it's out for you to see what they do to us when they can. And Egypt knows that, and we know that, so there's a barricade to prevent weapons from going into the Strip. Because when they have weapons, they kill Jews for the sake of killing us. When they infiltrated Israel a few days ago, they could have had a strategic plan and they go to military bases and try to take over the country. Well, they will still be invaders and pieces of shit. But the war crimes that you've been seeing, that was the intent and the purpose. The murder of innocent people, brutally, and then taunting them and berating them in the streets and uploading it to social medias and cheering about it and being proud about it. That was the purpose. So there's a barricade for safety. It's not that they started rebelling and being all mean and trying to kill us because of the barricade or the alleged oppression that doesn't exist. It's because of their terrorism. It's because of their murderous ideology. It's because of their goal to eradicate the Jews and finish up what Hitler started. That is why there's a barricade. And even still, they managed to receive so much weapon and money from Iran and from you, my dear American viewer or, your, or European viewer. How much money did your country send to the Palestinians? Where did it go to? The thousands of rockets that fell on Israel. In the past 20 years, by the way, rockets are not new. You just don't see it all the time in the news because, well, what they're going to show you every day, a rocket falls in the south of Israel. So all these rockets, artilleries, bombs, weapons. That manages to get into the Strip with the barricade. What would have happened if it was a normal border? By the way, it is a border. 
This barricade is a border. We just don't allow. We we it's a very sealed border because you can't let weapons in. But even then, weapons come in. Hence, you see what happened. So what would have happened if it was like a, a cute bush separating us? I wouldn't be here. My people wouldn't be here. So that's the big bad wolf barricade. A checkpoint, just like you have between Canada and the U.S., like between countries. The normal, legitimate, everyday things that somehow are demon-like, if Israel does that, if the Jews do that, that is anti-Semitism. Taking basic to even good things and somehow managing to warp it into something terrible and blaming the Jews for it. Let's break that down. You now hear that Israel cuts water and electricity to Gaza. <gasps> but what about the innocents? I'm I'm sorry. Are you are, are you are you supplying electricity and water and gas to Mexico? To Canada? <gasps> but what about the people there? Oh, their government is supposed to be taking care of that. And if somehow they don't have electricity and water, then their government and their leadership should be held accountable for that and demanded of that. Of oh my God, common sense. Why can't you handle common sense with Israel? Gaza is not a part of Israel. They're not Israeli citizens. They're not in the premise of Israel, hence segregated or apartheid or what? No, they are their own autonomy. If they don't have electricity and water, complain to Hamas, your leader, that you cheer for when they kill Jews. By the way, the Palestinian Authority pays I think I said that, but I'm going to repeat that. It's called pay to slay. Pays. I said that already. I'm not going to repeat it, but it's called pay to slay. The salary that they give Palestinians to kill Jews. Okay? So the Palestinian people, they don't have electricity and water now because we're done doing this humanitarian aid to a people, let alone a people that wants to eradicate us, that just massacred us. Yeah, no, we're not doing that anymore. It's not our job. It was never our job to begin with. We've been doing this for 20 years and they've gotten so used to it. They think it's actually our job. So they complain to you. They cut off our electricity. We've been giving you humanitarian aid that we should not have been giving you. That we should not have been giving you. That your own leadership and your own government should have been giving you. Hamas is supposed to build infrastructure of electricity and water and gas and all that jazz. But what they do instead with all the money that Iran sends them and you send them, weapons, underground tunnels. Planning who knows how long the past mass this massacre that we just endured. So if the Palestinian people want electricity, they can, I don't know, be like, hey, Hamas, we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want you to waste your money and time on trying to kill Jews. Instead, can you build infrastructure for us? But no, no. What do they do? They're like, yay, Hamas did this and that. Israel cuts off our electricity. How dare you, you demon? And you're like, you're like, oh, no. Like, I hear Kim Iverson says it on her channel. Like, how stupid. Yeah, we give them water four times a week and electricity and it cut, gets cut, cut off at one point, but it's not because we're supposed to give them because they're our citizens and we don't give it to them every now and then because they're, they're segregated or apartheid or whatever. No, it's not our job and we're done. It's not our job and we're done. You feel so bad? Go talk to your American viewers and tell them to give free electricity and water from their tax money to Gaza. If you think that's, that another country should give another country gas and electricity at their citizens' expense, go and preach. Preach to your people to do that. Why are you complaining that Israel doesn't do that? If you think, we should, if you think anyone should do it, go and do it. Oh, you think someone should do it, just not you? Just not your country? Just Israel? 
And if, if it doesn't do that, then Israel is the devil, but you're okay. I've been to the streets of Gaza and I've seen it. They only have a few hours a day of this and that from Israel. And then, ha, 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 you moron of a butthole of a brain. Oh, you think they showed you their plans? And their tunnels and their bombs and their charter? No, they didn't show you that. Just, they just walked you through how poor they are. Yeah, they are oppressed. They're, they're living a terrible life because of Hamas that isn't taking care of their infrastructure and is constantly causing terrorism to Israelis. And then Israel has to retaliate. And instead of blaming Hamas, and I don't know, maybe like bringing them down and having a better government and having a better leadership and actually being benevolent in the world. No, they don't do that. Have you ever thought of why? Because they hate Jews. They're not going to tell you that. They're going to tell you they have a problem with Israel. And they're going to tell you that yeah, they have a problem with Zionism. They have a problem with the occupation. Because they know you're a dumbass American. And not, not all Americans. Most of you are amazing. I love you. But when you're stupid, may the gods help us all. When you're stupid, you're stupid. Because it's easy to be stupid when you're so far away. You don't need to know everything. I get it. I don't know everything about every country and every region in the world. But then I don't presume to talk, let alone judge. Especially when it has to do with the people that have been lied about and vilified for God knows how long and then killed for it. Let's talk about this blood libel. What happens when you believe the words occupation, apartheid, there 20 to 25 percent of Israeli population is Muslim, is Arabs, and they have equal rights. We have Muslims and Jews and Christians and Buddhists and secular and whatnot living all under equal rights and equal obligations, except for IDF, because actually Jews have more obligation. Because if you're a Muslim, you get to choose if you want to join the IDF, and if you're Jew, you if you're a Jew, you have to. And by the way, we have a lot of Muslims Israelis that serve in the IDF. I'll get to it with us because they don't believe in terrorism. Because if you think that. Every Muslim supports Palestinians, then you think every Muslim supports terrorism, and that's your Islamophobia. Did, did you just hear what I said? Rewind this. There are life-loving, beautiful human beings in Israel of all religions coming together, living prosperously as the Palestinian psychopaths trying to annihilate their brothers and sisters, the Jews that give them a wonderful country to live in, that they're a part of, an equal part of. And they denounce it. Some don't because some are idiots. And some do because they have a brain and a heart. So there's no apartheid. There's no occupation. There's no oppression. There's no systematic annihilation. What the fuck? Their numbers just grew exponentially in the past decades. How does that work? with ethnic cleansing. Let me tell you something about ethnic cleansing. If the Palestinian people had the power that the German people had at the time at the, over the Jews, we would be in, concentra in concentration camps. We would not be. The only difference between them and Nazis is that Nazis have power to enact their ideologies and the Palestinians do not. But you just got a glimpse of what they would do to us if they could if they could. Never again, just happened again. But trust that it won't again. And here you need to join the battle. Don't pray for peace, pray for Israel. Praying for peace, it's like sitting in front of a raped woman and her rapist and be like, why don't you two just get along? You know that it's abusive. You know that it's deranged. You would never say something like that or do something like that. But to us, why can't the Jews and the Nazis just get along? There's always two sides to each coin. I bet there's faults here and there's faults there. And there's... Come on, just hug it out. Shut the fuck up.
fuck up, you privileged bitch of a brat. If you can't say pray for Israel, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear that this and that is true. I don't want to hear the bothism. Because you know now that it's not true. Oh, well, they were in an in a open-air prison. Oh, they were you know, occupied, so they were liberated and they were upset, so they, they, went, they went a little bit monstrous <laughs> because they were upset. No, weren't oppressed. There were monsters before. That's why they got barricaded. Israel now has full capacity of its soldiers, plus 150% of reservoirs, people who are drafted as reserves, and more that come without a warrant, without a request from the IDF. They just show up. 300,000 Israelis who are not currently in service of the IDF join the IDF. That will be the equivalent of one in every 27 Americans in Israeli numbers. Speaking of equivalence, the 1,000 plus butchered in Israel, that would be as if 25 to 30,000 people in America would die in a day from a massacre. That's the extent of what we've just endured. It was the darkest day in Israeli history and the Jewish history since the Holocaust. The most amount of innocent Jews dying in a pogrom, in a massacre, since the Holocaust. So if you excuse it, if you say, but what about? You're an anti-Semite. You're a terror supporter. You're collaborated with monstrosity and with evil. And I don't care what you think. And I don't want to hear you. I'm away in a safe place. I hate it. And I'm still pitching in every single person in Israel that isn't with the reservoirs or with the IDF is building up war rooms and, and volunteers and picks up everything, everything the soldiers could possibly need in the field and, and drives it to them with their private vehicles. And, and you cannot imagine how Israel is coming together. Israel is now coming together. Israelis, Israelites are now coming together to fight evil. This is a matter that the entire world should be into and interested in, in a part of, and in support of. Because if we're on the front lines of fighting evil, it's the worst monstrosities that, that you can see. Then it means that if we fail, it then comes to you. So you're fucking welcome. So you can either cheer for us or you can shut the fuck up. And if someone says something next to you, you can tell them the same thing or show them this video or just distance yourself from them because why would you want to be with a racist? Why would you want to be with a hater, an anti-Semite? Everyone else you would just cancel, but them, you want to hear their opinion. Okay, go go talk to Nazis about their about their opinions. Go, go, what are you doing here? Go talk to Nazis about their opinions. What do you, what do you want? Let's talk about what happened in Israel. This morning I woke up to the news that 40 children and babies were found in a village in the south of Israel where the main massacre occurred. Dead. Babies beheaded. A grandma had a terrorist infiltrate her house, take her phone, use it to video how he murders her, and then he used her phone to upload that video of hers to her Facebook, to her social media. So that's how her family found out. She saw on Facebook her mother and grandmother being murdered in her house. Teenage girls, young 20-year-old girls, in a rave party in the south of Israel, were group raped by the Palestinians, terrorists in front of their just murdered friends, 
and then they got either executed or taken into Gaza. People were burned alive. Children, elderly, women, men, Holocaust survivors were taken hostage to Gaza. Holocaust survivors. That's what they needed to survive Hitler to come to their homeland, the Jewish homeland, to be taken by Palestinians. That's your free Palestine. You're so woke. You're so good. Everything I said about the lies about Israel, by the way, that's blood libel. Blood libel is when you tell a lie about someone that makes them seem so demonic and so evil. So then when you go and butcher them, the world is not so upset about it. Well, because, well, maybe they deserved it and they were so bad and they were did, did, they did this and they did that. So, you know, maybe that's the reason. For the past decades, the Palestinian propaganda machine has caused blood libel against us, and you've been cooperating with it. Universities in the U.S. insidiously cooperating with it, teaching anti-Zionism, which is anti-Semitism. Zionism is the right of the indigenous people of Israel to live free and safe in Israel. That's it. You have a problem with that, you fucker? Like what? The evil Zionist, the evil indigenous person that wants to live free and peacefully, not persecuted and not slaughtered in their land. How dare they? And you have these campaigns in colleges and students just listen to it and nod. And now they're anti-Zionists too. It's not anti-Semitism. We love Jews. We just hate Israelis. I love green. I just hate green people. This is my IDF t-shirt. I've been sleeping with it. The symbol is a sword and wings. I'll show you a bigger. The entire Jewish people, entire Israeli people especially, are now one sword. One sword. We're all together in this stronger than ever. And we don't care about your opinion anymore. If you approve, if you don't approve, if you understand, if you don't understand. You can either join us or you can continue with the blood libel against the Jewish people. Wow, they're so cool. But know this, for thousands of years, every generation tried to annihilate us. They all failed. They all failed. Palestinians will fail too. And they will be added to the long list. Of evil holes in the history of humanity. That were filled with light. And heroism and miraculous stories of survival. And if you support that, if you support them, you'll be a part of it. You'll be on the wrong side of history, and that's yours to deal with. I don't care. See, I know our strength. I know our light. I'm not worried about who will win. I know we will win. I'm worried about the price that we will pay, that my friends that are now drafted and are about to and I have been fighting in the south of Israel to save lives. We already lost a few from a unit. And I'm scared for them when they go into Gaza if that's what Netanyahu decides. I'm pretty sure that's what will be. I don't know. And I'm hurting for the for my people who have gone through this atrocity and those who died horribly and 
everyone, every single one, my family, friends, and, and, and people who lost a loved one, who are terrified for another loved one that is there and captive. I, I, I can barely eat. I don't sleep. I haven't slept in four days. This is the first time I'm, I'm, I found myself able to, to speak to you, to make this video. It is long whatever something else I, I just remembered I forgot to mention uh, you hear on the news sometimes and you have been hearing that for a long time in the media referring to Palestinian terrorists as militants or warriors what the fuck sanitizing the atrocities that they commit, making them look like they're okay, making diabolic actions look okay against the Jewish people, against any people. But especially considering the context of what we have gone through, really? You, as a news reporter, as an editor, as a writer, you would partake in Nazi propaganda and make no mistakes. The Palestinian propaganda is Nazi propaganda. If they had the money and the power that the Germans had then. So you partake in that? Fighters? Militants? Freedom fighters? What the fuck is wrong with you? If you're an editor in any of these news channels, you know what I saw from the New York Times just a few hours ago or yesterday? I don't remember when I saw it. It's like everything is like one big blur. They showed, no, it wasn't the New York Times. The New York Times is atrocious, atrocious in and of itself, disgusting. From a uh, news channel, Channel 4 News on YouTube, they made an entire article. There's, they have a reporter in Israel. They showed footages from Gaza, from Israel. They showed probably the most mild video from Israel of Palestinians taking hostage a woman, a mother with her two children, already a war crime, already in and of itself as a war crime, so you can't, you can't sanitize it, you can't make it look better. But they tried. See, in every video that they upload where you hear Arabic, they don't translate it into English. The one they did is the one where a Palestinian terrorist says, oh, don't hurt her, we, we don't hurt we don't hurt women and children. That's the one thing they translated to English, trying to make it seem like they were just taking her hostage, but not hurting her because they don't hurt women and children. Do, do you not see the images, the videos, the numbers of brutalized, beheaded children and desecrated, raped women that are then executed and paraded in the streets of Gaza, spat on, cheered on their bodies, Oh no, they don't they don't hurt women and children. You know that. They know that. But they chose that one video that sounded like his acting, even if he wasn't acting, that's still committing a war crime. Okay, you're a good you're you're a relatively not as evil. You're a little less evil. One person. But in ways of like showcasing the situation, that's the one phrase in Arabic you choose to translate to English, not the it bahal yahud, which means slaughter the Jew. Not one day, not the video where you see Palestinian children take, taunting a four-year-old, Israeli four-year-old that they abducted into Gaza, calling him a filthy Jew. In Arabic, that one you didn't choose to translate? What, so you can say it's not anti-Semitic, it's political? You hiding the truth from your viewers is not trying to be objective. It's deceitful. It's a propaganda machine against the Jews. It's lying. It's diabolic. If you don't talk about these babies,
I'm a Jew in ethnicity. I'm a Jew in culture because my country, Israel, is a miracle. It has the most amazing people in the world that hasn't been taking over the world, you anti-Semitic fuck. It has been over-contributing to the world. So many things you use every day that are Israeli inventions. From your GPS and your Google Maps to the to your USB portal, your, to the cherry tomatoes in your salad, to the sprinklers in your garden. You have no idea how much we contribute to your life as you turn as you turn your head away, as you look away. If you're a spiritual teacher out there, you know what, if you're anyone out there, and you don't talk for Israel and vocally, unequivocally say, I pray for Israel, and I'm, I join the fight with them, even if not physically, but in heart, if you don't say that because you're afraid it's political or controversial or will cost you followers, if you want to appease your anti-Semitic followers, and simultaneously, if you ever wondered... What you what 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 you would have done in the Holocaust? You wouldn't stand up for us because you're scared to lose a following. Because you're scared to be too political. Because you're scared it doesn't match the 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 fabric of your of your profile. Then if you don't do that because of those reasons, if you don't stand up with us because of those superficial, cowardly, empty reasons. You would definitely not be a person who was hiding Jews in the Holocaust, because back then it would cost you your life, not just a fucking like. And you're not a spiritual leader. You're a fraud. You're a coward. You're in it for the status. You're in it because it's cool. You're not in it for truth, love, and justice. And I denounce you. I denounce following you. I denounce learning from you. I denounce enjoying your content. Israel is a miracle. It's amazing. It's benevolent. It's loving. It has every ethnicity, every religion and belief system, everything you can imagine. In a country the size of New Jersey, that over-contributes to the world and everything. And still, not only that we have to go through this suffering, we have to go through seeing you look away and believing the lies and the propaganda and the blood libel against us and partaking in it and saying, well, maybe they deserve it. No, we don't. We never, ever aim to harm, harm innocent people. What army in the history of armies ever warn people before it bombs them. Never. It's unheard of. We're the first in history. And then they stay there because, well, it's it's holy to die because then they'll get their virgins, right? And this jihadi war and this holy war. And then you see it and you're like, oh, they killed innocents. If you stay quiet when we're massacred, stay quiet when we retaliate. Do you understand me? If you didn't speak up for the butchered Israelis, you shut the fuck up when it comes to war casualties in Gaza. Because that's what they are when they're harmed. And it's a tragedy and I would never celebrate that. But there's a difference between war casualties when you don't aim at them, when you aim at terror structures and, 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 and just to make sure that they don't hurt you again. When they could have left and chose not to. Versus a brutal massacre and a pogrom against the Jewish people for being Jewish and then celebrating on their bodies and then posting it on social media and being proud of it. If you don't know the difference, you either don't have a soul or don't have a brain. Honestly, I don't know. I don't care. If you don't know the difference, I can't help you. If by now, after this video, you don't know the difference, I can't help you. 
So as I said, I'm a Jew by ethnicity and I'm a Jew by culture, but I'm Israeli. I'm an Israelite. But as a spiritual teacher and as an occultist, after decades of studying occult systems and truths and wisdoms from different cultures and different theologies and different philosophies, everything keeps circling back to Kabbalah, where you have astrology and numerology and aliens and metaphysics and what not, to, what not. And being that it was before the Celts and the Jewish wisdom was before the Celts and before, you know, the Romans and before the Greeks and before the, the Muslims and before the Christians, you know what? As a spiritual teacher from a place of, of, of seeing that, I am in awe objectively, even if I wasn't ethnically and culturally, objectively as someone who searches spiritual wisdom and occultism, I am in awe with Judaism. The one religion that never forced anybody to be Jewish because it believes that faith comes from the heart. Because it believes that faith comes from the heart. And we want you to live by what you believe in as long as it's loving and not harmful. And we want you to, if you want to join us, that it would be from your own free will. There are so many things I probably failed to mention. But I'll just say this. I pray for Israel. Am Israel Chai, which means the people of Israel live. We will win this. We will persevere. And I hope. I hope you can join us vocally, proudly. I hope you don't be another generation that took too long and has ignored our cries. Don't be another generation that says, oh, those Jews, they don't need our help. They're already all too powerful. Anti-Semitic. Or maybe they deserve it. Anti-Semitic. Don't let us perish. I mean, we won't let us perish. But at least be able to tell yourself that you wouldn't let us perish too.